after the euphoria of the British Grand Prix at Cardiff uh, last Saturday, a fabulous occasion for British Speedway. We're back to domestic action and we're back here at Oxford's Cowley Stadium. And I'm pleased to report that despite that uh, little crash that he suffered at Cardiff, skipper Greg Hancock is back riding tonight, which is good news indeed. And the other good news is that a bullet, Billy Hamill, makes his long-awaited return from injury. I think everybody in Speedway will be delighted that Billy is back in action tonight. So it's all change for the Oxford Silver Machine as we take on the Arena Essex uh, Hammers, who uh, last night knocked Ipswich out of the KO Cup. So they're on a bit of a high, but with Greg and Billy back together and our new Russian signing, Rene Gafarov, making his debut tonight, while well, the Oxford Silver Machine are looking uh, to stay injury-free and hopefully pick up some wins between now and the end of the season and move off the bottom position. Can they get three points tonight at the expense of the Hammers? Well, we're about to find out. So you all know. <laughs> Let's go racing.
So here we go then, getting ready for this vital Elite League match between the Silver Machine down the bottom end of the table and Arena Essex just above them, and I mean just. This is a vital one. The B fixture, the teams have already met down at Perfleet and uh, Oxford went down by just one point. So a two point win or more will guarantee them all three points. However, Arena Essex have won the toss and taken gates one and three in heat number one. So that means Gary Havelock goes off the inside gate, gate number one. In red, it's Greg Hancock for the home side. And new sign in, Sergei Darkin is in yellow. Travis McGowan in blue and away they come. What a super start there for Greg Hancock. So Hancock it is in front. And it's Darkin in second place. Havelock in third place to go around the bottom turn. Darkin going very, very wide. Havelock hanging to the inside. McGowan is at the back. And again, Darkin going wide on the corners here. And McGowan looking for a gap up the inside. This time he's gone through it. So McGowan into third place. Havelock looks over his shoulder. And just cuts back inside. McGowan goes out. I want a super pass that was. And he's finally not gone past one of the hammers, he's gone past them both. So around the third and fourth turn, Hancock well clear, there's McGowan in second place. They're on the last lap, third place there, Greg Hancock. Darkin is at the back, but it's going to be a perfect start for the home side. So around the third and fourth turn, heading for the checkered flags, a win for the rider in red, Greg Hancock, but more importantly, his partner coming through to join him, Travis McGowan. Five to the Silver Machine, one to the Hammers, and of course, that is the scores, 59-1, the winning time for the skipper there. So we have a look at the start here again, there is Hancock in front, McGowan, you can see him up the back. Now watch this here, they're going to the bottom turn, this is Darkins, Hard into the corner, goes very, very wide. Havelock still looking for him. And McGowan is beginning to size him up. This time he goes out wide again. Darkin goes wide. And McGowan says, thank you very much. I'm coming up the inside. Through he goes. And now he sets his sights on Havelock. And Havelock has a quick look there. Cuts back on the inside. And McGowan says, well, I'll go round you then. Super fast. And it's a big 5-1 to the Silver Machine. So we're getting ready for heat number two. No Thomas Brzezinski. His place is taken by Jamie Courtney. Courtney rides in red. Henker Gustafsson is riding in blue. Could see him fit. In green, Josh Larson, the Californian. And in yellow and black, Roman Pavenci, the Russian. So how often is it you see a meeting with three Russian riders in, in British Speedway? Perhaps that is the way forward. 
and it certainly is in this one because Larson's gone in front and Pavanchi is right there behind him. Now here comes Courtney looking for a gap up the inside and they're in problems, oh my word! That is an evil looking crash! And Gustafsson and Courtney absolutely head on into the air fence and Gustafsson is under there somewhere with those machines and that was an evil one and we wait patiently here the medical staff the track staff are trying to get those machines out from under the fence Henke Gustafsson is under there with them you can see Courtney down on the circuit and what was horrific looking spell let's have another look here you know round that first and second turn down the back straight now watch the rider in red here because he hooks up coming into the corner there and somehow misses Pavanchi but he doesn't miss Gustafsson his teammate and that is pretty horrific so the race having been stopped and the rider in red Jamie Courtney is excluded but it's more of a concern there for the riders and the fact that someone's excluded because it really did hit that fence behind and you can see it is a pretty solid fence the old safety fence there it's got a metal post behind it and the dog rail as well and well Henke Gustafsson amazingly walking back and not such good news for Jamie Courtney who is still receiving treatment and uh, well perhaps very fortunate that there was an air fence there so we're going to have a restart then of heat number two without the rider in red we've had uh, major repairs carried out on the safety fence here and it's Henke Gustafsson the lone Silver Machine Rider in the blue helmet against Larson and Pavanchi. Pavanchi is very lucky not to be involved in that spill as well. So here we go, and there they go, and into the first turn, and it is Larson and Pavanchi one and two. Gustafsson there in third place. Into the bottom turn, and this is a good one for the Hammers, although Larson in all sorts of trouble there. And how did he miss his teammate? Gustafsson has got round the outside of him. And the uh, entrance to that third turn is causing them problems so Pavanchi leading the way there's Gustafsson and again he's gone wide on that third turn Larson trying to find a way up the inside it's a 4-2 at the moment and Larson staying very very close to that curb so into the bottom turn and Arena Essex with Roman Pavanchi out in front second place there Henke Gustafsson third place Larson and it looks like it's going to be 4-2 to the visitors. Got two turns to negotiate here. And again, the stuff's been going very, very wide. And it looks like he's hung on, or has he? Well, I don't think he has because Larson appeared to pass him there on the line. And we wait for the referee's decision on it. And we know the winner was Roman Pavanchi. And indeed, in second place, in yellow, Josh Larson, third place, Henker Gustafsson. So it's a 5 1 to the Hammers. Let's have a look at the finish here. There's Pavanchi, no problems for him. Now watch for second place, and Josh Larson got it. So 1 2 Oxford, 5 2 Arena. We're all level 6 apiece as we get ready for heat number 3 and making his debut for the Silver Machine in red from Russia. It is Rene. And let's try and get this one right, Gaffaro. Gaffaro rides in red. His partner in blue, Niels Christian Everson. We've got Lee Lanham and Paul Hurry for the visitors. And out in front, it's Niels Christian Everson. So Everson leading the way. Second place there. It's getting awfully tight, and Gaffaro's gone down. He's fallen there. And how again, how did he miss Paul Hurry? And once again, that third turn causing problems. So Niels Christian Everson it is in front, leading the way. Second place at the moment, it is Lanham. Third place, Hurry. Gavaro is back on his machine at the back. And he's a long, long way behind. So you go round this third turn once again, no problems for Everson. And second place there, 
and it's still Lee Lanham, third place Paul Hurry, so we're looking at a shared heat. And uh, well, Gaffaro at the back could do nothing in that one on his debut. Three points apiece, nine nine. There is Gaffaro, he's finished the race, so credit to him for that. But we are all level after three heats with uh, Niels Christian Evenson providing the winner there for the home side. See Gary Havelock out there doing a good job. Let's have a look at the opening of this race here. There's Everson. Now there's the rider in red, Rene Gafferov. Now watch this here. He comes up the inside, goes in very, very hard. And uh, well, he's a lucky boy. Ronnie Russell there having a look at the circuit here. Must be wondering what's going on. His team is still in it at nine points apiece as we get ready for heat number four. And riding in red it is the bullet. A big welcome back to Billy Hamill. He rides in red. In blue, Henker Gustafsson. In green, a big welcome back to Mark Laram as well. And in yellow and black, Roman Perrant. He's already had one win. Here we go. Oh, and a rolling start there for the rider in blue Henker Gustafsson but it is out in front Provenci and Mark Laram comes up the inside so Provenci on the outside Laram on the inside holding back there so he didn't run into his teammate third place Gustafsson at the back it is Hamill but it is the Hammers on a 5-1 and this would put the visitors in front there is Provenci he's certainly having no problems whatsoever he's enjoying himself second place at the moment it is Mark Laram, there's Gustafsson in third place and he's gone out wide to the fence. Hamill's gone through into third place but he's a long way behind. Well, we're certainly getting some interesting racing in this one. And the man out in front, Roman Provenci, having no problems whatsoever. And well, there was a time when Russians couldn't ride small tracks. And he's an Eastbourne asset, Provenci, he's won it. Second place goes to Laram, his teammate, and third place there to Billy Hamill. And that is one to Oxford. It is five to Arena Essex. And the Silver Machine have 10, and the Hammers have 14. Getting ready for heat number five. And Rene Gafarov is out in red. Niels Christian Ibsen in blue. Gary Havelock in green, Sergi Darkin is the rider in yellow and black. That's how they line up then for heat number five, five or 15. Essex side in front at the moment, here we go. And away they go and a good start there for Darkin on the inside and the Russians are really enjoying themselves here. Here comes Everson looking for a gap up the inside. Can Darkin get round the third turn and the rider in red certainly can't. That is Gafarov who's gone wide and the Hammers are calling the shots at the moment. So Darkin in front, Gafarov at the back but in between them Niels Christian Everson and Gary Havelock. Everson trying to size up Darkin goes out wide looks for the cutback as they go down the back straight into the bottom turn. Everson this time will try the outside. Is that a good idea on that turn? It certainly is. Look at that. Oh, what a pass. Super pass there by Everson. So Everson it is in front. Second place, Darkin. And third place at the moment, it is Havelock. So we are looking at a shared heat. Gavroff is at the back. But Niels Christian Everson provides the race of the night so far to win that one. Three to him. Two points to Darkin, one to Havelock, three to Oxford, three to Arena. The Hammers are still in front by 13 points to 17. Well, the Hammers then, four points to the good. Let's have a look at this pass by Niels Christian Evesen. There he is going right out wide and he cuts back up the inside but the door is shut there well by Darkin. And now he decides to try the outside and on this third, fourth turn we've had a few problems but no problem there for Everson, absolutely first class. And he goes on to win it and make sure that his team stay in with a shout. They are four points down, they really do need to do something. They're getting ready for heat number six, Greg Hancock, Travis McGowan, Mark Laram and Josh Larson. That is how they line up then for this one. So the 
Staff Marshal calling them into place in the Ram and Larson have uh, looked pretty good so far. So what can they do in this one? And away they go, and into the first turn it is Hancock. Oh, and he's gone right around the outside of Mark Loran. That's a super pass. And McGowan and Loram giving it a go. Therefore, second place. But it looks like it's going to be Loram who's going to come out in front. It is indeed. Although McGowan coming back at him into the oh, first turn there. And Loram's in trouble. And McGowan has gone through. And it is Oxford 1 and 2. So Hancock, it is in front. Second place there, Travis McGowan. Third place at the moment. It is Mark Loram at the back. It is Larson, but if it stays like this, it will level things up. It's around the pit turn there. And uh, McGowan looking over his shoulder, and Loram is coming back at him. But Hancock it is, who is leading the way. McGowan in second place. This is going to be a Super 5 one. Around the final two turns there. And all oh, problems. Oh, and oh what dreadful luck there for Travis McGowan he's lost a chain and he's lost third place as well right on the line and that really was very very cruel it is a win for Hancock second place there Laram and third place going to Larson and well look at that there Travis McGowan rode absolutely superb come back the 5-1 was on and right on the last corner so three points apiece and 16 20 the scores after six heats and uh, Oxford can really count themselves unlucky not to be level so heat number seven sees Billy Hamilton in red Henker Gustafsson in blue Lee Lanham is in green and Paul Hurry is in yellow and black that is how they line up then for this heat Heat number seven, and away they go, and into the first turn, and it is Hamill, who's got the drop, Hamill in front, looks like we've lost hurry with machine problems, Lanham in second place, and in blue, Henker Gustafsson trying to find a way around the outside of Lanham, and he's done him, super pass there by Gustafsson, so Billy the Bullet, back in front, and leading the way here, only his second ride here at Oxford, on his comeback and he is back in the frame very very nicely Billy Hamill in front second place Gustafsson third place there in green is Lanham and this is going to be a 5-1 and this will level things up Gustafsson coming under pressure there from Lee Lanham for second place no problems though for Hamill he is in front and there we go round the bottom two turns and it is Hamill who's won it the second place Gustafsson and the crowd are loving it really is back and five points to one 21 21 there is the celebration wheelie that is what we've come to love and see so the silver machine are level 21 21 and Billy the bullet is back with a win Riders on the circuit, therefore, heat number eight. Travis McGowan in red, Henker Gustafsson in blue, Sergei Darkin in green, Roman Pavanchi in yellow, and that is a Russian pair in here for the visitors. And they're certainly rushing from the start there because out in front it is Pavanchi, and Darkin has gone with him. And well, third place there it is Gustafsson, and he's got some work to do at the back. It is Travis McGowan who done all his work in the last one. Oh, and look at this here because Darkin slowed going into the corner. They've gone one either side of him. Gustafsson on the outside, McGowan on the inside, and now they're after Pavanchi. And Sergi Darkin, who looked so impressive on the opening lap there, clearly slowed going in. And look at this here because Pavanchi's in front, second place at the moment. It is Henker Gustafsson, and Gustafsson is really chasing inside and outside but it looks like Provenci has got the measure of him third place there Travis McGowan at the back Terje Darkin and what looked like a possible 5-1 for the visitors has turned into a 3-3 but Roman Provenci down at reserve he's going to get his third race win out of three there he goes over the line second place goes to Gustafsson third place McGowan so 24-24 at the halfway stage of this meeting still plenty of racing to come 
and uh, well, which way will it go? Hammers one up for the bonus point. Let's have a look at some of the action from that first lap. There's uh, Provenci there, he's dark in such a fast starter. And Gustafsson goes right out wide, tries to find a way around the outside. Darkin moves over. Now watch this here because he slows going in, almost lost it there. And one either side of him, super pass. So we move into heat number nine, and it is Rene Gafarov in red, Niels Tristan Everson in blue, Mark Laram in green, and Josh Larson is the rider in yellow and black. Of course, there's no black these days, it's just yellow. Here we go then, the riders up the line, green lights on and off they go. And a charge for the first turn. And Gafarov has missed the start completely, but Niels Christian Everson hasn't. Everson it is in front. And Laram chasing hard in second place. Third place at the moment it is Larson. But Niels Christian Everson is leading and Mark Laram is trying to find a way past him there goes out wide trucks the cut back but Everson seemed to get an extra bit of speed and pull away and Gafarov at the back he's giving it a go but not making up too much ground on Larson but look at the man in front Niels Christian Everson is this going to be his third win it looks like it might, although Laram has got ideas of his own. And Gafarov again trying to get past Larson, and Larson taking him right out to the air fence. And if you can get through a gap that big, you do very nicely. So around the final two turns, it's going to be a good win here for Everson. There he goes over the line. Second place goes to Laram, third place to Larson. The ninth heat is split three points apiece. And the teams are still locked together at 27 points apiece. Well, we've got six heats remaining. There's absolutely nothing between the teams on the night. There's just one point between them as far as that aggregate bonus point goes. And uh, I'm sure there's a few nails being bitten. So here we go then, heat number 10. Greg Hancock rides in red. Travis McGowan is his partner in blue. Lee Lanham is in green. Roman Pavanchi takes a reserve ride in yellow, replacing Paul Hurry. And away they go. And the unbeaten Pavanchi got a super start there. Pavanchi is in front. Let's go down the back straight. And second place there, it is Hancock. Third place, it is McGowan. And Hancock trying the outside run on Pavanchi. Oh, it's a super pass. Greg Hancock in front, second place it is Pavanchi, third place it is McGowan at the back it is Lanham, but it's his silver machine on a 4-2 and are we going to see the deadlock broken? Greg Hancock in front, Pavanchi there under all sorts of pressure from McGowan and McGowan going right out wide, lost a lot of ground there. Still Lee Lanham in last place, but no doubt about the man in front, that is Greg Hancock second place there it is still the rider in yellow Roman Pavanchi the reserve but Hancock is gonna get his third win here and here comes McGowan oh where did he get the speed from right around the outside right on the line it's a 5-1 so the deadlock is broken Hancock has won it but what about that second place there from Travis McGowan absolutely breathtaking pass and rightly he's coming round for the applause of the crowd. Third place it is Pavanchi. Let's have another look at it. There they go around the final two turns. No problems at front, but watch McGowan here. Oh, super pass. Five points to one, 32-28. The score. So the riders on the circuit for heat number 11. Billy Hamill rides in red. Henke Gustafsson is in blue. Gary Havlock rides in green. And Sergei Darkin, the fast starting Russian, rides off the inside gate in yellow. That is how they line up then for this heat. The Hammers now four points behind, and away they go. And again, it is Darkin very, very quick off the start. Darkin in front, and coming around to join him, it is Havlock. Third place there, Billy Hamill at the back. It is Henke Gustafsson. Gustafsson, of course, having to take young Jamie Courtney's rides. But it's looking good for Arena Essex in this one because Darkin is in front. Havelock's tucked in behind him. Billy 
Hamill there in third place. Well, he had a win last time out, but Darkin and Havelock look like they've got it sussed up in this one. Down the back straight into the bottom turn. Hamill will try the big wide outside run here and then switch back, but Havelock it is almost with eyes in the back of his helmet, but it's Darkin in front. It's the two former world champions, Havelock of Britain and Hamill of America in second and third places and here comes Hamill this time trying the outside run and this time he's off oh, right on the line he's got him unbelievable speedway tonight really is first class and a wheelie there for Billy Hamill he knows it and my word let's have a look at the finish of that race Darkin is well well gone but there is Havelock now watch Hamill here he screws it on and the race for the line he gets it by half a wheel absolutely superb well this is the kids clubs reps Laura and Neil and they're picking the winning entry for a program of the British Grand Prix signed by Hancock, Hamill, Laram, Havelock and Graham Stewart and Sophie Blake and a nice souvenir for some youngster so heat number 12 it should be heat number 12 not heat number 11 and uh, well riding in red Rene Gafarov Inc. Gustafsson in blue, Lee Lanham in green, Josh Larson in yellow and black and away they go and look at this here because in front it is Larson who's made a super start, Larson leading but he's been passed by Henke Gustafsson, Lanham in third place, Gafarov is at the back but Henke Gustafsson really doing well in this one around the first and second turn Larson in second place, Lanham in third place and the Russian at the back who hasn't managed to score a point yet on his debut but he's improving all the time and he's looking for a gap, Larson is in trouble and he's gone down and Gafarov has gone past them both so out in front it is Gustafsson, second place Gafarov, third place there it is Lee Lanham, Larson the fuller and my word he is back up on his machine and he was a bit lucky with the others right behind him but it's another 5-1 to the silver machine it's a win for Gustafsson second place he's got some points now it is Rene Gafarov and third place Lee Lanham 39-33 what a so far been a very exciting entertaining and eventful Elite League B fixture so the silver machine are six up and uh, well let's have a look at the passing on that one we've watched Larson there in the yellow helmet because he loses it going in there there you go well we're left before Gaffrov is chasing he doesn't have any problems there does Larson or Lanham and here comes the Russian looking for Gap on the inside and this is where it all happens because there's Larson spinning out and uh, well Lanham seemed to get in a spot of trouble there as well and uh, Rene taking full advantage heat number 13 riding in red Greg Hancock his partner in blue Billy Hamill this is what they wanted to see the two H's Hamill and Hancock and you've also got Gary Havelock and Mark Loram as well so Arena needing some points, which way is this one going to go, here we go, green lights on, and away they go, and the charge for the first turn, and it is Laram and Havelock 1 and 2, so Mark Laram on the outside, Gary Havelock on the inside, and there is in blue, Billy Hamill trying to find a way around the outside, you've got Greg Hancock looking for a gap up the inside, but it's Arena pairing, and look at Havelock, he's under all sorts of problems, Laram in front, Havelock still in second place and here comes Hamill again on the outside and again Havelock moves over and shuts it off and now Hancock tries the inside oh and he's got him what a pass and my word 
Gary Havelock must have wondered where they were coming from. They were all over his rear wheel. So Laram in front there, in second place it is Greg Hancock and Hancock now going after Mark Laram. Then place it is Havelock at the back in his Hamel. But Mark Laram is going to take the glory from this one but only just three to him, two to Hancock, one to Havelock, another super heat of Speedway Racing. And it is Arena who take it by two points to four. Now it's just four points in it because it's 41 to the Silver Machine and 37 to Arena Essex. So the penultimate heat, heat number 14. Riding in red, Niels Christian Everson. And his partner in blue is Henke Gustafsson. Paul Hurry rides in green and Roman Pavenci is the rider in yellow and black. That's how they line up then for heat number 14. Here we go, green lights on. And away they go, the charge for the first turn. Good start there for the home pairing. It's Gustafsson and Everson, one and two. And Gustafsson in trouble there and he's gone down. Oh my word, it's all happening in this one. So Everson in front, second place at the moment in green. It is Paul Hurry, third place, Roman Provenci. And Provenci started off so well, tail off in his last couple of rides. But he has ridden well, you can't take it away from him. You can't take it away from this guy in red. Niels Christian Everson, looking for his fourth win. He's around the bottom turn, second place at the moment. Paul Hurry, he's had a poor old night. He's only Third ride, he was taken out of his last one. He's there in second place. Third place at the moment for Avanci. Gustafsson was a faller. And uh, well, not surprising, it is his seventh ride. There they go over the line. A win for Everson. Second place, Hurry. Third place, Avanci. And uh, Henker Gustafsson there having to retire from that one early. So, three points apiece for the last heat decider. 44-40, Arena need a 5-1 to uh, take the bonus point and take a draw on the night. And let's have a look at this again here. There's Gustafsson. And what Everson is really is a super speedy ride around the outside. There he goes in front. There's Gustafsson. They get into trouble again on this third corner. And oh, that could have been nasty. He the bail out. And he did it successfully. Time to write up the programs to get ready for this heat number 15, the final race on the card. Greg Hancock in red. Niels Christian Ibsen still unbeaten, he's in blue. Roman Pavashny rides in green and in yellow and black is Mark Laram. Laram with 9, 8, 10 from his first four. Pavanchi with 11, 8, 12 from his first five. What's going to happen in this one? And what is going to happen, it is the rider in red, Greg Hancock, who's gone in front. And here comes Everson, switching back perfectly to join his partner. So Hancock leading the way. Second place there, Everson. Hancock has time to look over his shoulder. Third place at the moment, it is Mark Laram at the, at the back there. It is Provenci. And in fact, Laram has gone to the back. Now he's coming back on the inside. Provenci on the outside. But it is Oxford, one and two. And this will pinch the win. I can't see them catching Greg Hancock. He's a long, long way clear. But there's the battle for second place. And it's Everson there at the moment. And here comes Provenci again, trying the outside on the lane. But it's going to be a maximum win if it stays like this. And it'd be a paid maximum for Everson, who really has been superb today. Arena have battled gamely, but the gap at the bottom is getting closer. There they go over the line. Hancock wins it. Three to him, two to Everson. And oh my word, look at that there. Because parting company with his machine as he went over the line, I think was Roman Pavanchi. And spectacular spill there after the race had finished. And it's a five one to the silver machine and win. 49 points to 41. Absolutely super speedway here today. Well, they're coming round. They're having a check. 
on uh, Provenci there who fell after the race had finished and uh, Everson and uh, Hancock having a check on the Russian let's hope that he is okay he really has ridden very very well and have a look at the finish to that race there is Hancock he's had a great time on wheel Everson takes it now what what happens here because He's an evil looking spill. I don't know quite. He seemed to hit the back of his own teammate, Mark Laram, there. And uh, really flipped over the fence. So, really celebration times for Oxford. They've taken this one by 49 points to 41. What a terrific night's speedway this has been. Well, as always, we will be going down to the press conference. Down there, and, uh, hopefully, an interpreter and have a word with uh, Rene Gafarov. And uh, I don't think we need one for Billy the Bullet, he's going to be there as well. So, a lift back there for Provenci. There's the scorers Hancock 14, McGowan 5, Gafarov 2, Everson 14, paid 15, Hamill 6. Courtney failed to score. Let's hope he's okay. We understand he's got concussion, and Henke Gustafsson scored. Eight. Total of 49 for the Silver Machine. Let's have a look at the Hammer scorers. Gary Havelock, four. Sergei Darkin, five. Lee Lanham, four. Paul Hurry, three. Mark Laram, nine. Josh Larson, four. And Roman Ferenci scored 12. Super Speedway. That's it from me. Let's go down to the press room. Good night. OK, let's start the press conference. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. You're let off, as it's the first one back. <clears throat> okay, let's start the press conference. Uh, Nigel Wagstaff, an absolutely sensational meeting. I mean, it had everything, but more importantly for the club, five wins on the trot at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, you need to try and establish that. And um, you know, when we when we lost Billy and things went a little bit awry, um, the reason for bringing in the riders that we brought in was to try and stabilise the club and. Uh, Essentially, we had to try and win our matches at home, and uh, you know they've, they've all been they've all been difficult. But I think in every on every occasion, the riders have dug in deep. And if I was standing on the terraces, I think I would have enjoyed what what the team has actually you know put on the track. And uh, I th you know tonight was um, it was a difficult match. I mean, arena, you know they've they've, they've gone through from in the co beating Coventry over the two legs, so they're obviously quite. Uh, you know, they're, they're quite confident at the moment. And young Roman, I believe, used to ride here, was particularly good tonight. But um, it, it was always going to be slightly difficult with, with, with Billy coming back. And young Rene, who, you know, he's coming in to British Speedway on a track that he, he wouldn't normally ride in his homeland, on a, on a surface that was maybe slightly tricky. So, you know... He's obviously thing. used to very big tracks. Well, yeah, they tend to be slightly bigger out there, that's for sure. And it, it, it then, you know, you, when young Jamie gets injured and, you know, you, who knows how many points he scored, but he did put a lot of pressure on Henker. You know, he'd be the first one if he's sitting there, he doesn't really relish seven rides. But, you know, in the last one, you know, we've got a great little score going. So then, you know, Greg has to, not has to, but does, as he's, as he's done many times, you know, carry the side and Niels Christian and, and Trav. I mean, what an injustice for Trav, how hard can that guy ride? Well, I was going to talk about Travis McGowan because he was trying so hard tonight. He, he was absolutely on fire, despite the bad luck. Well, that's Travis, isn't it? It doesn't matter if he scores 18 or, or 2. He, he will always be the same. I guess you could say that the track, you know, he, he has no fears with the track like that. And it's great entertainment. And uh, I just think um, I'm, very, I'm, I'm really proud of every one of them. It's great to see Billy back. And I think I'm sure it was such a solid team performance, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, one thing I want to say to you is that a lot of the fans have been saying to me how pleased they are with you because things have gone so wrong, but you've never given up getting in so many, the right squad together. You just looked and looked and looked, and now you've found an incredible Russian talent, which we're going to talk to in a moment. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't just drop on them. I mean, you know, people probably know that, you know, I, I did go to Sweden to try and get Freddie Lindgren. I did spend maybe three times in Poland with uh, Robert Muscovach. They're, they're out there, but you know, 
sometimes you need a bit of luck to secure them. But um, this guy's a real talent, and um, to, to come here tonight, and every race or every ride getting stronger and stronger, and performed, you know, a, a, probably a match turning manoeuvre. Um, you know, he was trying the outside and the inside. And to be perfectly honest, although I'd signed him before I went to Latvia, if you speak to Greg, Greg will tell you that for four laps he hounded him as well. Okay, thank you very much. What I want to do now, could you just pull that out for me, Nigel, that programme? Yeah, so I can just read that bit there. Just pull it out a wee bit, that's much better. Let's, let's talk to the real man of the moment, because nobody could believe that Billy Hamill would be back. Welcome back to the track. And it was always going to be a tough debut because when I spoke to you last week, you really wanted to ride last week, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's been a long, hard, you know, it's not easy sitting on the sidelines, but, um, you know, uh, it, was, it was awesome to come back, you know, and I, I thank everybody and Nigel Wagstaff for, for sticking by me, as I've said before, but, um, you know, it's just awesome to be back on a bike. I'm, I'm having fun once again, and I think it shows. <laughs> well, it certainly showed to me, because when I met you in the pits last week, you were saying, oh, I've had a few, you know, a few laps around, around the track, I'm really back into it. You were desperate to ride again, weren't you? Which, you know, considering what happened to you, could you believe when you were in that Swindon hospital that you would be back on the track riding for the Silver Machine by mid-June? I didn't know what to think, you know. A million things probably went through my head while I was spending sort of nine days in that hospital, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm back and I feel good. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't even making starts tonight, which was a little bit unfortunate, but, uh, you know, I, I still got, you know, the huevos to go around the outside and I put in some hard races and... Um, and you had a win. I, I, yeah, I had a win and that felt pretty darn good. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I would say it's been successful. I need to, I need to work on my starts, obviously. I, I got caught out a little bit on that, but I think once I get that, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be picking up a few more points. Yeah, I think many of the fans will be amazed how well you've done tonight anyway, because, I mean, coming back from an accident like that, straight in, it's a very, very tough meeting tonight. Your performance was nothing short of sensational. I am pretty good, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> Typical American, huh? <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been awesome. You know, the camaraderie with the boys has been good. You know, we've, we've got the, the, new, the new signing, you know, and... Do you know how to pronounce his name? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. I don't want to offend him. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, you know, it was tricky track conditions and... Um, to, uh, you know, for, for me to make my debut here, it was it was a bit daunting, really, but um, I'm glad I got it out of the way. You know, that gives me confidence, knowing if I can ride a, a tough physical track and, and my body has reacted okay, I'm, I'm feeling great. Okay, thank you very much. Billy Hamill, welcome back. Now, this is the part I really enjoy. Let's start off with the correct pronunciation of Welcome to Oxford, first of all. Let's get his, the correct pronunciation of his name. Ruslan Oy, Renat Gafurov. I think you've got a wrong rider there. Renat Gafurov. Oh, that's too difficult for me. If I, if I said Renat Gafurov, is that quite, is that okay? Gafurov. Gafurov, okay. Welcome to Oxford, Renat Gafurov. Now you're going to have to translate this to him, yeah? I'll, I'll talk very slowly. Um, clearly, he's used to very big tracks, and in his first few rides, he was coming into that third bend at, at a very, very fast rate, and then finding it impossible to come out of the fourth bend, but he quickly learned. Я не имел, это была первая гонка в английской лиге и без тренировок, и поэтому первое выступление, конечно, было очень тяжелым. Но к концу соревнований я смог показать. Thank you very much. I think roughly translated, I, I was the important person in Heat 12, which actually won the match. Because actually, I think that's where the match was really won, when, when he got past to get that 5-1, Roger Wagstaff. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, obviously everybody played their part, but um, 
May, maybe we didn't quite expect that, but um, it took the pressure off, didn't it? Yeah, it did, and it's probably one of the, the most welcome received paid wins, you know, that I've seen this year. It was, and it was nice because, as I said, he he, he improved every ride, and you know, it was it was classic really that he, he tried the outside and then came in the inside, and that shows an awful lot of skill and ability. Well, he didn't want to go back to Russia with the. No money to buy food. <laughs> but you would, have, you would have paid him for four starts, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd have, I'd have looked after him. I'd just, um, he's, he's part of the club now, you know. It's, it's wonderful to have him over here. And, you know, he's going to, along with all the other boys, he's going to be giving us great, nice of entertainment, I'm sure. OK, talk to us about what's coming up, because next week it's the enemy, and it, it includes uh, your former club, Coventry. Talk about Coventry, and because now you've got a full side to put out. Well, we always look forward to riding against Coventry, and I guess with Greg and Billy, it was always going to be a special occasion. And um, earlier on in the year, it, it didn't work out through no fault of anybody's in particular, just situation that we lost Billy. But I'm sure, you know, the, the Coventry fans will want to come and see them both ride together. Um, I think at this moment in time, maybe Coventry is struggling a little bit. I think, um, if I understand things, maybe one of their riders may be leaving. Um, so I don't really know what their side will be, but as far as I'm concerned, you, you know, we, we've got our side now. I don't really see any, any reason to do any tinkering with it. We're committed to it, and I think it would take a very good side to beat us at home within the next two or three weeks. And with the riders we've got, I feel confident to, to go away from home, put on a very good show, and maybe nick a few away wins as well. Finally, because I want to come back to Billy to end off, but I've got a little question for you, Nigel. Is there any truth? in the rumour that this shale that's out there has come from Cardiff. There wasn't any there. <laughs> what, what are you trying to say to me? What I'm trying to say is that obviously there was a lot of spare shale left over after a certain meeting last Saturday. And maybe some of it's ended up here. No. Okay, so definitely not. None of this shale's come from Cardiff. No. <laughs> now, uh, this is if you bring it back in your car. Okay, in your pockets. Yeah. Right, but finally, Billy Hamill, obviously, this is going to be a very important meeting next week because you, I think, will be back to full form. It's Coventry. You know you've got to win because you've got to get the side up to fifth or fourth place, get the silver machine up the table. Your message to the fans for next week. Well, I think we can go in confident. I think the boys, you know, especially Greg, Trav, and, and Puck, you know, having a full team has got to be a huge bonus for all of them. And, uh, you know, I think that win tonight, I mean, Arena beat Bellevue at home a couple weeks ago or something, and, and uh, you know, they gave us a good run. So I, I think we can go in quietly confident, and, uh, you know, I think we'll be out there kicking some butt. <laughs> well, kicking some butt. Great to see you back on the track, and that concludes the press conference. Well,